Charlie Fiorina is the name coming out of this debate most this morning. Social media, the different uh, assessments of the debate, really saying she had a breakout night. You know her, the Hewlett Packard CEO, uh, landing clean blows on Trump, but also in her own cause. Uh, some of the most memorable moments. She's got a big smile on her face uh, this morning. It's good to see you, Mrs. Fiorina. Good Smiles, not something we saw too much from you last night. What was your mindset going in, and what do you think worked for you? Well, we were talking about serious subjects last night in many cases, and so um, a smile is not always appropriate. Um, look, into last night, half the audience had never heard my name and didn't know I was running for president. And so it was a really important opportunity for me to introduce myself to the American people and to show them that I can win this job and I can do this job. A lot of people were waiting for a moment that you and Donald Trump came to blows or had <laughs> some sort of exchange, and there were many of them. So let's watch a little portion of you and Donald Trump last night. You know, it's interesting to me, Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. I think she's got a beautiful face and I think she's a beautiful woman. What did you think of that moment? What did you think of when he said that you have a beautiful face and now you're a beautiful person? You know, it's still different for women. Uh, it's only a woman whose appearance would be talked about while running for president, never a man. And I think that's what women understand. That's why women understood what Donald Trump said about my face in the first place and also what he said about my face in the second place. The point is... Uh, Women are half this nation. Women are half the potential of this nation. But somehow, we still spend a lot of time talking about women's appearance instead of their qualifications. What gave you the wherewithal and the desire to do what nobody else has done in this race on your side of the field yet, which was, I'm not just going to wait to respond to Donald Trump. I'm going to go at him. I'm going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and I'm going to fight him, and we'll see how... You know, you did that more than anybody else last night. Well, first, I hope it's pretty clear that uh, I am a fighter. I have also been the most vocal critic of Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail, presumably the Democrat Party's nominee. This is going to be a fight. This is an important election, and we're going to have a fight about really important principles and really important policies and really important differences. And so if you can't fight on a debate stage, then you're not going to be able to stand up and fight for the American people. And the American people are looking for a fighter because they know this is a pivotal time in our nation's history. They know these are important issues. And so, yeah, I'm prepared to fight. You did something different last night. You shared a very personal moment about a tragedy in your family. I believe we have this moment and it's something that you don't talk about often. So let's listen to this. I very much hope that I am the only person on this stage who can say this, but I know there are millions of Americans out there who will say the same thing. My husband Frank and I buried a child to drug addiction. So we must invest more in the treatment of drugs. That surprised people to hear that you had had that in your background. Can you tell us more about that? Well, there are so many families who have gone through this or are going through this. And it is an epidemic now in so many parts of our country. Drug abuse. Yes, drug abuse. We don't invest enough in its treatment. We need to tackle criminal justice reform. But anyone who's gone through this knows that it is tragic to watch someone's life ebb away in the clutches of the demons of addiction. Speak to that, Mrs. Fiorina, because, look, there's, there's an emotional price uh, when you open up your life like this, but you know that is part of politics, and it's certainly it part of it something is. that you thought was important enough to stay on the debate stage. What was it like for you and your husband? Because people say addiction very often, well, it's weakness of character. It's poor choices. It's criminal behavior. 
What did you learn through your own life about the realities of this problem? What's misunderstood? What's needed? Yeah. This can afflict anyone. It afflicts millions. It is described in so many communities in our nation now as an epidemic. It touches every part of our society. It's not just about poor. It's about poor, middle class, rich, men, women, young, old. We, the war on drugs has failed. We need a different approach. I mentioned criminal justice reform briefly. You know, we have the highest incarceration rates in the world. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds of the people sitting in jail are there for nonviolent drug-related offenses. It's not working. We're not investing enough in this. And so it's a terrible tragedy. And while, of course, it's difficult to talk about, I think it's also very important to talk about so that families that are suffering through this know that they should not feel ashamed or stigmatized, that we must provide help, that we need to invest more. You know, it's interesting. When I'm on the campaign trail, and sometimes this will come up, always, and it's so generous of them, but always people will come up to me and say, the same thing has happened to me. We're suffering with this in my family. Two people came up to me last night after the debate and said, I lost a child to addiction. I want to ask you about your experience uh, during the debate. It seemed to me, this is unofficial, but I was trying <laughs> to take notes, that you got the most applause. The things that you said, the crowd responded to the most. Were you surprised at how much applause you got last night? You know, I've been out on the campaign trail since May. And despite the fact that I have, before last night at least, the lowest name ID in the field, people respond. So I am not surprised that people respond because actually folks are tired of politics. They're tired of politicians. They're looking for leadership. So I couldn't gauge the applause. You know, I was very focused on what was happening on that stage and thinking about what I wanted to convey. Uh, but I'm not surprised that people respond. I've been out there a long time talking to a lot of people every single day, and I know how they respond. I'll take the other side of it. <clears throat> I feel that there's a, a different experience with you when you're on the hustings, uh, when you're in close settings like this, and then when you get on the big stage. I'm not saying you're intimidated by it. Uh, we thought you were going to do well last night. You just did better than uh, <laughs> we, we even expected. But they're looking for a leader, but it's going to be a person they pick, not their policies. Uh, yes, the fair criticism on Trump is he has to put meat on the bones. You exposed that last night several times. But what do you think people will learn as they get to know Carly more? Who is Carly? Why is she somebody that they should feel comfortable with, they should feel safe with, they should feel cares? You know, I started out as a secretary in a nine-person real estate firm. My story is only possible in this nation. And it's proof, actually, that everyone has potential. Every one of us has God-given gifts. I know that. And I've seen it over and over again. And so I come to this with the firm belief that no one of us is any better than any other one of us. Each of us has enormous potential. And I'm running for the presidency of the United States because I truly believe, and so do the American people, that their possibilities are being crushed regardless of their circumstances. This is about, I think, a leader in the Oval Office who will provide the opportunities, the tools, the support to every single American regardless of their circumstances to find and use their God-given gifts. I've been through very bad times. I've buried a child, I've beaten cancer, I've had good times and bad, I have been tested. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to falter on this campaign.